coaches, welcome back to another Modern Soccer Coach Breakdown. This week we're going to take a look at how to create a central overload in midfield, how to create perhaps a box midfield without necessarily starting in a box midfield. So how to move players, rotate players in, in possession of the ball to create central overloads and goal scoring opportunities. If you enjoy it, please like and subscribe. And if you want to take a closer look at these breakdowns, you can check them out for free on the link below, modernsoccercoach.com. I've got all the written information, so if you want to slow it down and take a look and take some notes, you can get them for free on the link below. And when you're there, check out some of the new resources of modernsoccercoach.com. Thanks so much for the support. Here we go. Central overloads. All right, before we start, as always, we look at objectives. Why would you want to do this with your system? So we're going to work through a traditional 4-3-3. Why would you want to create a potential box in midfield, a four-player midfield? Well, there's an obvious one, which is a central overload, which typically teams will match up three for three in there. So it's hard sometimes to get that space. If you drop another player and manipulate that space, you can create that plus one numerical advantage in a really, really critical part of the pitch. Because as we're going to see, if you can break pressure in that area, you can get access to the final third or opposition back lines and potential goal scoring opportunities. The second objective, which I think is really interesting doing something like this, is that you create a structure underneath the ball. So if you do lose it, and you're going to lose possession in a match, it's only natural. You have a structure underneath the ball to A, stop counter-attacks, of course. So you have maybe those two central midfielders already in and the back four. Or B, hopefully, counter-press and win the ball back against a disorganized defense. So depending on what your game model philosophy is, hopefully this gives you a good picture of being flexible in a system without having to go out and play set system so a little bit more flexibility around positions rotations and allowing you to create optimum pictures higher up the pitch here we go all right the first way we're going to look at to move this 4-3-3 and create that central overload we're going to move a few players around the build so first of all the objective is to invert the fallback so not just inverting the fallback alongside the six of course we need to have space for that fallback so the number six is going to have to move across, the full back goes in, but then you're going to have to move what's left of that back four, which now becomes a back three, making sure your distances are right for, again, that space to make sure it's occupied to break out. Again, you can use the goalkeeper here if you need, and then once the pressure arrives from the opponent, there should be a way to combine in midfield, use that extra player, Access the back line of the opposition, get numbers forward and create a goal scoring opportunity all with the option of inverting the fullback. Alright, our second option now to again use the 4-3-3 and create that box in midfield. Again, we're going to use a rotation, but we're going to use higher rotations now. So we're going to use the, on the right side of the pitch, we're going to have the number two going forward, the number seven dropping in. So this is a little bit unorthodox. We're going to put one of our wide attackers into a lower position. And then on the other side of the pitch, we're going to rotate between a wide attacker and an attacking midfielder. So again, four players moving all with the right time. This time you're unbalancing the shape, so you're not necessarily moving that back line. You're going to keep that shape the way it is, lower down the pitch. Again, this will create a little unbalance for the opposition. And you can get the full back into an attacking position. And what you do, and what I love about this here, is getting the full back in probably unbalances that back line in terms of the question marks the opposition are going to have over who's marking who. And by getting a full back in, you might be a 3v3 or 1v1 opportunity. So I really like this way of, we talk about inverting the fullback to create a box, but what about inverting a wide attacker and getting a fullback high? The difference again is that it's going to offset some marking responsibilities. Perhaps if you do a scout and you realize that the opponent are pretty man-to-man -man oriented, then you might be able to unbalance them by doing this. 
Coaches, if you enjoy these breakdowns, these 4-3-3 tactical patterns and the rotations and the movement and the timing, please check out our new resource on Modern Soccer Coach 25 4-3-3 tactical patterns. PowerPoint presentation, all the exercises feature a variety of ideas within a 4-3-3 structure that coaches can use, adapt, suit their team against a specific opposition, build confidence, technique and improve tactical understanding with your build-up, midfield combination and final third play. All exercises are available to watch on the video format and have the details on the PowerPoint presentations. 25 exercises total available now at modernsoccercoach.com for only $9.99. I'll also put the link in the description below. 433 Attacking Patterns. Thank you. The third one we're going to look at for creating the box is not necessarily a box. This one's more like a diamond, but it still has that plus one advantage in midfield. So now you're going to drop the number 9 in and then carefully position the 7-11, those wide attackers, into the space in between fullback and centre-back. So this means that, again, centre-backs can't really follow the 9. They're going to have to stay alert for the 7s and 11s. And fullbacks can't really jump either because they're leaving a 1v1 at the back. So push your fullbacks higher in order to offset that marking responsibility. And then all of a sudden you have a really, really aggressive attacking picture here. With that number nine dropping in again, you can break lines and passing lanes can open up for players to carry the ball. And then you've got those runners on the outside coming in. And again, potentially goal scoring opportunities, hopefully. So there you have it coaches, just some ideas around creating those central overloads. Sometimes when you're looking at 4-2-3-1 or 4-3-3, again, what stands out in 4-3-3 for me, it's the two tens into those inside spaces. But you don't want to leave one single six in counter-attacking position. So you can do both by playing a little hybrid of a 4-2-3-1 and a 4-3-3 with flexibility. And again, you can just move those players into different positions at different stages the more flexible you are the more difficult it's going to be to defend against and i would argue that if you're using this here type of system to rotate high to rotate low you're going to have players that are going to start thinking about spacing a lot more because when you're rotating the objective of rotating is to occupy new space so you're going to have to communicate and see where you're going into and what you're leaving. So communication is really, really important, but because the game's moving so fluidly, and we talked last week about a set piece being a goal kick restart, this is almost the opposite. This is where it's gonna happen in terms of timing, and again, that flexibility is gonna have to be really, really accurate. So players are gonna have to do a lot of this themselves. So I think training's really important in how you're gonna set up and structure it. But I think players being able to initiate, players being able to understand, players being able to communicate all of the aspects that we talked about and seeing the pictures, so, so important. There's obviously going to be a trial and error if you're doing this at younger age groups because, again, players will not be confident rotating as much. But sometimes that challenge can surprise you. Sometimes players can pick this up really, really quickly. And three, four matches in, they may start surprising you in terms of where they're rotating to. And they may start asking more questions about what if this player drops in. And all of a sudden, you've got more football conversations around it, which can lift game understanding and this game intelligence that we're trying to improve at all times. So I hope you enjoy that again if you did. And if you want to take a closer look, we'll put the information below for free on the Modern Soccer Coach website. All the breakdowns that we do, we put for free on the links below. So if you miss anything and you want to take a read and you just enjoy consuming the coaching information a little bit different, we try to help you with that there. And we've done that because we've got so much support over the last 12 months. We're up to 41,000 on this YouTube channel, which is unbelievable. We're going to get it up to 100,000 in the next 12 to 18 months. And when we're doing this here, we're trying to add different elements to the channel as well. So your support matters, your support is appreciated, and your support will also help improve the quality of what we're going to deliver in the future. So big, big thank you for that there. 
subscriptions are huge so if you haven't subscribed please do and I promise you we will keep the information going and we will put more and more out there and more and more free content for coaches to consume as well the modern soccer coach website there's resources too that you can look to webinars and stuff like that there the modern soccer thank you so much for your support I will see you next week goodbye 